Your gaming PC should not be loud. Noise is a symptom, and with my help, you'll find the cause. It's not actually bad cooling to blame, so stay with me on this episode of PC Clinic, where we'll look into BIOS tweaks, fan curves, and other ways to optimise your setup for the lowest noise. I'm your host, Dr Jack, and with 10,000 hours of PC building experience and a legit medical degree, you can trust my diagnosis and treatment. This is a comprehensive guide, so it's long, and it's not filled with dopamine retention gimmicks, so if that's the kind of video you want, leave. If you want actual good educational content, stay with me. Question for you. What do you want? No, seriously, what do you want? Do you want the PC with the lowest noise, or do you want a PC with the lowest possible temperatures? Because those two can't coexist. If you turn your fan speed down, then of course your PC is going to be quieter, but the temperatures will go up. If you turn your fan speed up, obviously the temperatures are going to be going down, but the noise is going to be going up. I don't care about benchmark results, I don't care about having the lowest temperatures, all I want is a system that works and that doesn't bother me with excess noise. So in today's video I'm going to show you my happy medium. The kind of setup that's going to allow your PC to turn the fans up when it's needed, but when you're doing other tasks that you don't want the noise to be high, you're going to have a really nice quiet experience. I also don't want you going out and buying expensive cooling gear like all this stuff that you see on screen or this deep cool vapour chamber cooler without trying some of these free methods first. You can definitely get a quiet system even if you're using cheaper gear. So why don't we crack on with the first method which is fan tuning, which is absolutely the lowest hanging fruit. So after building and servicing nearly a thousand PCs, this is by far the lowest hanging fruit for reducing the noise level of your system, and through the magic of capture card technology, I'll be able to show you how to set your own fan curves in order to improve the noise profile of your PC. There's two ways to do this. You can either use the BIOS or you can use a fan control app, and each has their advantages and disadvantages. BIOS is a base level solution that will always work, and it doesn't matter if you reinstall Windows or anything else, the fan profile will always be there. However, there is a second method called the fan control app, which gives you a little bit more granular control over those fan speeds if you're somebody that likes to tinker a little bit more. I'm going to explore both, but I'm going to start with the BIOS because this is the method that I would recommend to most people. Quick note, some OEMs like Dell, Acer, and most laptops aren't going to let you do this, in which case you might want to skip ahead to the fan control, but for most people using standard gaming PCs, this is the method I'd use. So in order to change the fan profile in your BIOS, you'll need to get into the BIOS. How do you do that? So with your PC off, you then switch it on and repeatedly tap the delete key on your keyboard until the BIOS screen appears. F2 might be a key that you can try if delete doesn't work. And if neither of those keys get you into the BIOS, then you can do it through Windows by going to the start menu, clicking the power button, holding shift as you click restart, and then using the options there to navigate to the UEFI settings. There are many different flavors of BIOS. Even within the same manufacturer, sometimes they look a little bit different. But what you're looking for is something to do with fan control. So it might be called QFAN, it might be called SmartFan 6, it might be called Fantastic Tuning or Fan Control or something along those lines. We're using an MSI BIOS today, as you can see in the screen recording. On this one, it's really easy. You just go down to Fan Info and then hit the little cog to open up the graph. What this is going to let you do is map the fan speed to the temperature of your CPU. But the principle is the same for all of them. On MSI, you do have to enable the smart fan mode in order to let you control the curve. On lots of others, you might just have to change this to a manual setting rather than clicking silent, standard or full speed. Eventually, you want to get to a point where you can edit the graph yourself. You'll see that on the tab here, where it says CPU1, there's an RPM reading there. And that shows me that there's definitely a fan connected to this header. We want to definitely ensure that the temperature source is set to the CPU rather than anything else. And then we want to adjust our curve. So a standard curve for me is something like what you see on screen now. I usually put the top right all the way into the top corner with a slow descent. So it's not a straight line, it's a, it's a slight curve upwards as we go, with the initial point being something around 60 degrees C and your fans running at between 40 and 50% speed. That seems to work out really nicely. We can see that we've got our other fan headers here as well, so we need to turn the smart fan mode on there, or select manual depending on your BIOS. Again, just do the same curve for all of them. You don't have to be precise and exact, as long as the shape is broadly the same, this seems to work out really well. But there is one curveball that you need to be aware of here. If you did have a system with a liquid cooler and you've connected the pump to the pump header, 
We don't have it in this one because we don't have a liquid cooler, but the curve I would set up is a bit different for the pump. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm definitely going to enable the manual control. I'm going to change it to DC mode if that's an option. It might be called voltage in your BIOS. And then I would adjust the curve so that it looks something closer like this. So the principle is that when your CPU gets to around 65 to 70 degrees, that's when you want your pump to start ramping up. But we don't want our pump to be all the way down at the bottom over here. Because if you don't have liquid running through your liquid cooler, it's going to mean your fans are going to have to spin faster to move the same amount of heat off your system. So having it at around 80%, somewhere thereabouts, and then ramping up when you get to about 70 or 65 degrees C, to 100% is probably the perfect curve in my opinion. How do you know which of these settings here are actually your water cooling pump? Because when you set your system up, you may not have actually plugged it into the pump header on your motherboard. The motherboard's not clever. It's not gonna know if you've plugged a water pump in or not. It's just gonna know which header have you plugged it into. If you have a liquid cooler pump, the RPM reading will be a lot higher than the fans, usually in excess of 2000. And that's how you know which one the pump is in general. If you're still unsure, you could turn the pump all the way down to zero on your graph and then literally put your ear to the pump to see if you can hear it moving and then move it up to 100 to see if you can hear the pump increasing in speed. That's another way. But for all of your fans, I tend to have them in this same curve with the pump having this slightly different curve where you start at 80% and then ramp up to 100% at around 70 degrees C. So we've done a lot of talking there, but essentially the point is copy this shape of fan profile and it will mean that your system only ramps up the fans when you're doing something CPU intensive. One little pitfall that you need to look out for is when you change to a system header, sometimes the temperature source will set itself to something like system chips out or something else. You need to make sure that this is set to CPU core. Most fans nowadays are PWM, so putting it on this setting for all of the fans will be absolutely fine most of the time. But if you find that they're older fans, like three pin fans, or they're running a bit too fast still, you can try changing it to DC instead and see if that makes a difference. Once you're happy with your fan profile, you can save and exit from your BIOS. Usually that's accessed via an X in the top right corner, or there is a tab that says save and exit in your BIOS somewhere. So we'll click that and then we'll click yes. And that will therefore save our fan profile. Now the second option is to use a Windows app called Fan Control. This will give you more granular control. So for example, if you wanted certain case fans to get faster only when GPU temperature goes up and certain other case fans to only go up when CPU temperature goes up, you'll need the app like Fan Control. The way it works is it hooks into the headers and lets you map certain headers to certain temperatures. You can download it from the link in the description and set it up. It will tell you what to do on screen. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because I do find that this app is a little bit finicky it's not always able to detect all different types of motherboard fan headers, so you end up doing half a job, which is why I usually recommend using the BIOS method. Changing the fans for your graphics card itself generally isn't advisable because they're pretty well tuned out of the factory most of the time already, and changing different case fans to respond to GPU temperature, maybe you're going to get slightly better performance, but I think overall it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. So personally, I would stick to the BIOS method. It's always going to work. It's always going to be there. It doesn't require an app. But if you do want more granular control, go and look at some proper tutorials on how to use the fan control app. But I've tried it here today and it's not picking up any of the headers for my motherboard. So it's effectively useless. Okay, so let's say you've tuned your fans, but things are still a little bit loud. Now is the time to thermal test your system to make sure things aren't overheating. I think the easiest tool that you can use for this is OCCT. It does it all in one package for you and it's really easy to set up and it's also free. So when you open up OCCT, you'll get a screen, something like this, and it will show you the idle temperatures essentially of your system. Really, those graphics cards shouldn't be going over 40 degrees at idle. And for your CPU, it really shouldn't be going over 55 or 60. At that point, you might be wondering if there's a cooling problem with your system. But regardless of this, we still need to run the test to see how hot things get. So the most straightforward test in OCCT is going to be the power tab. So if we just go down, leave that on auto and then click start. This will instantly load your CPU and graphics. These aren't the most super intense tests, but they're going to give you a good benchmark for what the temperatures are like when you're doing something intensive like gaming. Now to get a true reading, you want to leave this going for at least half an hour to allow all of your components to heat soak. 
but we can still talk about the general gist of what we need to look at here. The temperatures we want to look at under stress, for your CPU you don't really want this above 85 if you can help it, and that's pushing it. Keeping it under 80 is ideal in my book. Then for the graphics, you really don't want the core temperature on your graphics card to be going over 80 degrees, because at that point you're going to start getting thermal throttling. And of course, with the higher temperatures, the fans are going to speed up faster as well. So when you guys do this, you leave it going for half an hour and see if you hit those critical values. If you're going in excess of 85 on either of your CPU or graphics card, you're going to need to look into your cooling solution. So let's say your CPU thermals are too high. What can we do about that? So you can either get a better cooler, if you're using the AMD stock cooler for example, that's always going to run hot. But if you've already got an aftermarket cooler on there like a tower air cooler or an AIO liquid cooler, then probably the first thing I would do is unmount that from the CPU, take it off, give everything a clean with isopropyl alcohol, check that you haven't left the film on the cooler on the bottom, check things like that, repaste it, remount it in an even fashion, and then retest your temperatures. It's amazing how often that will work. If after doing that your temperature is still too high, it probably means you need a better cooler. Although I suspect if you've got a dual tower cooler or a 360 millimeter liquid cooler, those are usually going to be sufficient even if you get cheaper ones. In which case you can follow on to our BIOS tweaks coming up next. If your graphics card temperatures were the problem and they're really high and it's screaming like a banshee, the only thing you can realistically do is take the cooler off and repaste it with fresh thermal paste. That can sometimes improve things drastically, but if it doesn't, it might just be that your particular graphics card doesn't have a good cooling design, in which case you might need to point some more fans at it to help it out. Another thing that will help with a hot graphics card is undervolting, but again, I don't have the capability in this video to show a full GPU undervolting guide, but if you want it, tell me down in the comments. On to some more advanced stuff now that you can do to reduce your temperature and therefore your noise. I want to go back into the BIOS of your PC yet again, but this time we're digging a little bit deeper. If things do go wrong and your PC doesn't boot or you get problems and you want to reset it, then all you have to do is go into your motherboard physically, take out the coin battery, wait a few seconds, then put it back in, and your BIOS will be reset. With that said, I've never had a problem with booting a PC after doing these methods, so let's see how it goes. So in the BIOS we can change something called the TJ Max or the thermal limit. This is going to be in different places on different types of motherboards, so you're going to have to do a little bit of digging around to find it. This is something you can do on Intel or AMD CPUs most of the time. Some of the other fixes we do later are mainly for AMD. So whichever way you do it, you're usually going to have to be in the advanced mode of your BIOS, and there's usually a tab or a button that you can do to get there. We've got it at the top here on this MSI BIOS. The location of where you find the thermal limit setting is a bit different, but usually it's under overclocking or tweaking, and then you need to go to Advanced CPU Configuration, and then AMD Overclocking, then to Precision Boost Overdrive, and then we're going to set that to Advanced. And you can see this opens up a few other options for us here. So if you have a good cooling system on board, you might think that you want to put the thermal limit higher, but actually, I think you want to put it a bit lower if you've got a good cooling system, and I'll tell you why. So you see we've got this option here that says Platform Thermal Throttle Limit. Sometimes you click on that to set it. I believe on the MSI BIOS you can simply type it. So if you type it in there, 75 is quite a nice place to be if you've got a good cooling system, because when you're playing games, the likelihood of your CPU going over 75 degrees C is very low, but if you're doing something like compiling shaders or doing a CPU heavy workload that uses a lot of cores, it's going to stop your PC from getting really loud. Some people would prefer to set this to 80, or even 85. The default is probably around 85 anyway, so 75 is a really good way to reduce the noise and temperature of your system. You may be going to lose a couple of percentage points of performance, but for me that's acceptable. I'd rather have slightly lower noise. If you're looking for to have a bit more performance, then maybe you want to set that to 80 or 85. Obviously, if you're on an Intel system, it won't be under AMD overclocking, but you should be able to find a similar value somewhere else in your BIOS. One thing you can do to offset some of the performance loss that you'll get with setting the thermal throttle limit a bit lower is by changing something called the Curve Optimizer. So if we go down to Curve Optimizer here, we can then enable it, and the easiest way is probably just to do it with all cores, change it to negative, and then just put in 20. 20 is pretty safe. It's going to work for pretty much everybody. If it doesn't work and you get weird blue screens, then come back and change this to 10 instead. Um, what this does is it means that the CPU can boost a little bit higher at slightly lower temperatures. And if you're just looking to reduce your noise, that is actually all you're going to need to do from here. 
But if you did want to try and squeeze some more performance out of your PC, you can try this. These next options that we do here, they may cause a bit of instability in your system. So if you're not interested in that, just skip this section, move to the next one. But for more advanced people that don't mind tweaking a little bit, we can change our PBO limits to motherboard, which is going to allow slightly higher boost on that CPU. Then we can put our precision boost overdrive scaler to 2x. I wouldn't put it any higher than that. Um, I think that's going to be fine. This will get you a little bit more performance, but it does come with the risk that you can put too much voltage through your hardware. So if you're somebody that's not into tweaking, that's totally fine. Put that scaler back to auto, put the PBO limits back to auto, and this is going to be perfectly safe with no problems. One thing that's quite nice to do when you do changes like this is to save it to a profile. That means you can come back and load it later. You can have multiple profiles if you want. So this one, I'm just going to put PC36 and then I'm going to save the overclocking profile, which means I can come back to this later um, and then I can have different versions, you know, at different stages of changing things. Once you're happy with that, of course, you just need to save and exit the BIOS again. One other thing that you can look into, which is very beneficial, is graphics card undervolting. That's going to reduce the heat in your system by reducing the power usage of your graphics card. I do this on my own personal system. I manage to shave about 60 watts off my 4080 Super, which reduces the temperatures greatly in the system in general. It's a bit beyond the scope of this video for me to show you a full undervolting guide for your graphics card, but if it's something you want, put it down in the comments and I'll do it. But otherwise, there's usually some pretty good guides out there. Undervolting the graphics card isn't particularly difficult. And finally, some common sense tips. I know these are basic, but you'd be surprised how often people miss these. So, for example, your PC needs breathing room. If you jam your PC right up against a wall, it's got nowhere for that ventilation to go. So that's going to increase your temperatures and therefore increase your noise. So you should really be giving your PC around 15 to 30 centimeters of breathing room minimum on each side. If your PC is on the floor, you might get slightly better temperatures by elevating it, putting it onto a desk, but that's gonna be minimal. Now, as everyone knows, PCs need airflow and ventilation, but that doesn't stop at the border of your PC case. If you're in a hot room with no ventilation and there's loads of dust in the room, absolutely your temperatures and therefore noise are going to go up. So if things are getting too toasty, you're going to have to open a window. The heat has to go somewhere. And of course, don't forget, if your PC is dusty, you should clean it because if you've got dust on your components, particularly on things like heat sinks, it's going to inhibit the ability for those components to offload heat. So thanks for watching. Subscribing really helps the channel. If you like this kind of educational content, Please let me know in the comments, but also like and subscribe. It lets me know that this is the kind of content that people want. If you've got your own tips for keeping noise levels down, put them down in the comments. Of course, any questions that you have for future videos, yeah, chuck those in the comments as well. If you have a friend that needs a beautifully crafted gaming PC, send them to my website, pc36.co.uk. Uh, but until then, I'm out of here.